A local 13-year-old uh, boy has just landed himself the dream job. James Whitehead has uh, been appointed as the junior supporter liaison officer for Luton Town Football Club after seeing the job advertised uh, by the club. Attending his first game at just the age of one, he now works alongside John Miller, supporter liaison officer. They popped in last week. A little chat we uh, found out when uh, James first became a Luton Town fan. I've been supporting Luton for ages and... I, it's just another thing to do with the club and yeah now you're 13 it says here that you've been a Luton Town fan for 12 years I'm quite good at maths and that for me says that your first game was when you were one yeah I came to watch against Derby County because my dad's friend had a box so he took me along and yeah. do you, you obviously don't remember that first game no or, but no. I've, got, I've got a picture of it like framed in the ticket and everything really? in my room. Do you do? You, what was the first game that you do remember? Because there, there, there'll be a first moment when you kind of remember being at Kenilworth Road, or a goal you remember, or a moment. Can you can you remember where that first memory is? I can't really remember where where the first game is because I remember different games, but I'm not quite sure which was the earliest. I remember a couple of playoff finals, the um, 2009 the Johnson Paint Trophy. The thing is, you didn't have any choice, did you? Because because Dad Alistair was basically, you will either be a Luton fan or, or you won't be allowed to be my son. Have I have I understood that correctly? Uh, a bit, yeah. <laughs> but you you get to go with your dad every. You're, you're a season ticket in the in the David Priest stand, aren't you? It's a season ticket holder. Um, is it just a really nice thing to do with your dad? Is is it is it your thing that that you both go to football together? Yeah, I go. I also go with my cousin and my uncle and my sister Emma. Ah. But, um, yeah, we just go and watch the game. Yeah. It's the whole family. Now, before we talk about what you get up to, um, John, this is a really brilliant initiative, isn't it? Uh, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I don't know if we are the first football league club to, to have a junior SLO, junior supporters liaison officer, but we're certainly one of the first. So James has been in post for, what, two, three months maybe now? And he's already making a difference, you know, with helping us reach out to younger supporters and get their views and opinions. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Uh, it's actually really good business sense because, let's face it, today's 10-year-olds are the season ticket holders of the next 40 and 50 years. It makes total, dare I say, business sense to, to ensure that they are engaged from an early age. I, I think you're right, Nick, but we're not looking at it purely in that uh, business sense um, it's just it's to help us engage more directly and to get views and opinions from the younger supporters but you're right I mean I speak to a lot of supporters more towards my age end of the spectrum who've been supporters for 50 plus years so you know that first game those first impressions are, are really important in terms of getting bedded into the football club so how did it uh, come about then James did you see an advert in a match day program what, what was the process um, well, uh, my dad actually found it on the website, and then um, we looked through the article, and we and then we wrote the letter and sent it off to John. So the point at which your dad said, "Okay, th there's this role here, this this junior supporters liaison officer," it involves backstage access it involves being around the players it involves being at the club it involves meeting fans. You thought to yourself, "I'm not sure I fancy that," didn't you? No. <laughs> It um, seemed like a really good opportunity because when I'm older, I'm hoping to be involved in the sports sort of business. So. Journalism, I, th I think, yeah. You, yeah. I mean, of course I was joking because this, this is such an amazing opportunity for, for a massive Hatters fan like you. Um, give me a sense of, of, of what you do as part of your role because I hinted there that you get to go backstage and, and you know you meet the players. But, but what, what have you done in the last two or three months? Well, um, because it's sort of early on in the role, we're still sort of establishing what I'm going to do. But um, I have done some pre-game interviews with the... Um, junior fans to go on the Junior Hatters YouTube channel. Um, I've tested out the Happy Harry's lunch bag and given feedback to the club. So really, you've been involved uh, from from the off as soon as it started. They've they've given you some some really important uh, roles to do. But you say that that you haven't yet fully established your role. So what do you see the role as in maybe uh, six months time or twelve months time? What would you like to be doing? Well, I really want to be sort of a vocal. A focal point to the um, to the fans. They can email me and give me ideas or 
like questions about the club. So, John, mm. how how seriously are the club going to take James when he comes to them with uh, an idea that some young fans have emailed him? Uh, what's he going to do? Does, does he then just uh, contact Gary Sweet directly and they will take those views on board? Uh, the quick answer, Nick, Nick, is we would take those answers 100% seriously because, you know, that's why James is there, to get the feedback. And so uh, that would initially come to me and then the club board and Gary would be involved and see what's going on and so on. Absolutely. I, James I, is, sorry, I just say, James is being a bit modest here. On Monday... I suspected as much. On Monday, he took part um, in um, a new magazine launch. I think it's called Kickabout, isn't it? The football. It's a football magazine for younger for younger fans, and he actually won the crossbar challenge against James Justin, didn't you? It's yeah. impressive. He's been a bit modest there. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> I, I think I think where I'm headed on this is this mm. is not this is not a, a lip service uh, project, is it? This is this is for real. The club really want to engage with the younger fans and and have put uh, James in place to to be the figurehead of that. Absolutely. I mean, we are committed to. Um, all fans, obviously, but we want to get feedback and we want to understand what junior fans particularly uh, would would like and going forward. And we have an, a few hundred junior Hatters fans already, but we'd like to grow that number, obviously. In terms of your bedroom, I've heard that it's basically a shrine to Luton Town. So, so what have you got in there? Um, well, like I said, I've got my first game. I've got from when we won the Johnson Paint Trophy in 2009. I've got like just p framed photos of like the ground and things and then I've got lots of like tops and on top of my wardrobe I've got like a signed ball uh, and uh, a signed photo of some players and yeah. talking of the ground what do you think is going to happen with the ground well um, obviously I hope we get the new ground but my dad's told me that like for years when he's been coming we've been talking about a new ground but yeah. Won't you miss Kenilworth Road, though? Because for all of its faults, and there there are a certain number of them, uh, for all of its faults, I mean, I, I really, as an Arsenal fan, I really miss Highbury. Um, obviously, we've got, you know, a lovely Rolls-Royce of a stadium now. It's immaculate and everything's perfect, but I really miss Highbury. Don't, don't you think you'll miss Kenilworth Road? Because you've had so many great memories there. Yeah, well, a bit, but then it's the future. We want like, a better ground... Progress. It can attract more fans and make it match day better. He's good, John. He's very good. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got his head completely around it. And also, this is a good time to be a Luton Town fan, isn't it? That there is a sense at, at your football club that the team is is very much on the rise. And you look at the the, the Premier League now, and there are teams in that uh, division, uh, teams like Bournemouth, teams like Swansea. I mean, Swansea ten years ago were, were going broke, and here they are. I mean, it looks like they may actually survive again this year. But here they are as, as mainstays of the Premier League. Is is that your dream, James? That you see your club rise through the the divisions as, as some of those other football clubs have. Yeah, because my first game, we were in the championship and we went down to the conference and we're slowly building it up, so yeah. I will say, John, that, that what links all of those clubs that have made those fairly meteoric rises is their connection to their local communities. That these, these are all clubs who have been at pains to, to tie those links. Again, I mentioned Swansea, Bournemouth as well. Uh, these are well-run clubs who are very, very much at the heart of the area in which they operate. And, and I wonder whether that's part also of the thinking uh, of Luton Town as a football club, that the more we engage the local community, the more momentum it gives the club. It's a very important point, Nick, and it's very important to us. Uh, so just by way of example, to give you an answer... Just this week, I've been involved in looking at translating certain, um, having translations done of certain uh, stuff that we have, marketing material and ways to become a hatter into different languages to engage with those communities. Uh, only this morning, uh, we've got some fans who are doing some charity work to sit on every seat at Kenilworth Road, the Brinos. So um, it's, it's, it's vital to us. And that's where I think compared to uh, some of the bigger clubs, we can get really uh, totally involved in the local community, yes. Uh, yes. And there is no doubt that, I mean, obviously results matter on the pitch. There is no doubt that, that what happens off the pitch is what drives a club forward. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, absolutely. Uh, it, success on the pitch is important, but the two things are, are, are linked. I mean, you can't guarantee success on the pitch, but what you can do is to work hard with the fans and within that local community. Yes. Are your friends jealous? Um, well, I don't actually 
like no, my friends don't support Luton. They're right. glory hunters in the Premier League. Ah, glory League. hunters. Okay, um, fair weather fans, yeah. Manchester United fans, Chelsea fans. Yeah, Arsenal. Okay, I understood that, John. I was I was just trying to very, very discreetly avoid that. Uh, so they're all glory hunters. You're a proper fan, but they must be a bit jealous of the access you've you've been able to get to this club. Yeah, but. I think it's a great story. So you now, you run your own email address. Are we able to give that address out? Are you happy to give it out if any young Luton fans want to get in touch? How can they get in touch with you? Um, well, just email me at junior.slo at lutontown.co.uk. Junior.slo at lutontown.co.uk. Um, and John, you were saying that you want to increase the number of young hatters, uh, the, 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 the members of young hatters. How, how do my listeners go around uh, taking part in that? And also, what do they get out of being involved? Well, I could say um, email the old SLO, but uh, if you like to email me at john.miller at lutontown.co.uk, uh, what they get out of that is some access uh, to to the players. They have a Christmas party. Uh, we had uh, an event at a trampoline park just the other week. Uh, they get regular emails and offers from the club. You are the only man I've ever met, John, who is able to turn a major international fashion brand into Luton Town kit. It's very impressive with your with your very, very smart orange jumper and your equally smart floral but predominantly black shirt. I, I see what you did there. I think you're being over kind there, Nick. Maybe the lighting in this uh, studio is not too... <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely orange and black. Uh, listen, great to meet you, James. This is obviously a, a dream role for someone like yourself who's a massive Luton Town fan. And uh, I've got every confidence and every faith in you uh, bringing all of your brilliant ideas to it. And, and you'll see those ideas come to fruition. So, so good luck with your role. Thank you. Thank you.